Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP, or Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Smart Take, we'll take a close look at the risk of major malformations following first trimester exposure to olanzapine. After receiving FDA approval, olanzapine became one of the most prescribed antipsychotics. Because of its significant weight gain, other side effects, metabolic side effects, its use as first-line pharmacotherapy for bipolar disorder and schizophrenia has decreased in favor of other medications, which have fewer weight gain and metabolic side effects. But that being said, it still remains a mainstay of treatment as it is, in spite of its side effect profile, one of the most effective antipsychotics. It's also FDA approved in combination with fluoxetine for bipolar disorder, type 1 depressive episode, and treatment-resistant depression. There are major concerns with lithium's use in reproductive age women, particularly in the first trimester, where it's associated with significant risk. Lithium's onset of action may also be delayed relative to the second-generation antipsychotics. The FDA also reported the release of the combination medication of olanzapine and samadorphin, which appears to have significantly lower risk of weight gain than olanzapine alone. Also, in addition to its FDA-approved indications, olanzapine continues to be used for multiple off-label indications, including autism spectrum disorder, eating disorders, anxiety, aggression, sleep disturbance, and delirium, among others. The bottom line is that an examination of its risk for major malformations in women of reproductive age exposed to olanzapine during the first trimester is clearly warranted, particularly since there may be delays during the first trimester in becoming aware of being pregnant which could be problematic if olanzapine were found to be associated with significant risk for major malformations during the first trimester. The Massachusetts General Hospital National Pregnancy Registry for Psychotropic Medication monitors pregnant women prospectively during pregnancy and postpartum. This registry actually started as a national registry for examining atypical antipsychotics, but has since included other classes of psychotropic medications. The authors report on data from over 2,600 women. When the data was analyzed, 49 olanzapine-exposed infants were compared to 1,156 infants whose mothers had psychiatric disorders but did not use a second-generation antipsychotic. So what did they find? The data was actually very reassuring. No major malformations were associated with olanzapine exposure during the first trimester. These data are obviously preliminary, but build on prior data regarding the reproductive safety data for olanzapine use during pregnancy and the first trimester in particular. This is significant as olanzapine for a variety of approved indications, as well as off-label indications, continues to be commonly prescribed to women of reproductive age. It's important to note that this analysis could not exclude more modest effects from olanzapine exposure during the first trimester, but major malformations were not seen with olanzapine exposure during the first trimester. Interestingly, the risk of major malformations in both the olanzapine exposure group and the comparison group not exposed to second-generation antipsychotics during the first trimester of pregnancy was actually significantly lower than what would have been expected in the general population. Now, this may reflect pregnant women enrolling in a registry having higher rates of healthy behaviors, or it could be due to chance or random error. Now, there are also some limitations in this preliminary analysis. For example, it's not clear that the data reported with olanzapine will generalize to other antipsychotics. It was not clear from this analysis where, whether there may be possible dose effects or threshold or interactional effects with other medications. Larger sample sizes are going to be needed to really tease out the risk or lack thereof of olanzapine and other antipsychotic medication exposure during the first trimester of pregnancy. The women recruited into this study also were mostly white, married, and highly educated so it's not yet clear if this data will generalize to the general population. 
women who enroll in registries have been reported to be high-functioning, well-informed, and maybe more motivated to monitor their and their baby's health and well-being. It should also be noted that the majority of women enrolled in this registry had bipolar disorder, not schizophrenia. So women with schizophrenia were underrepresented in this sample. Now, I have to mention that many of the authors in this study had strong and multiple relationships with pharmaceutical industry, including those who manufacture second-generation antipsychotic medication. The bottom line, though, is this study provides growing support for olanzapine exposure during the first trimester in pregnancy not being associated with major malformations. More modest effects could not be excluded in this preliminary sample, but altogether, this is reassuring to those of us treating women of reproductive age. <music>